Amen, amen, amen. Such a wonderful day, such a beautiful day, and it's such an honor to be among your presence today. Hallelujah. It's our always Sunday service, Friday service. I'm always so energized to share the word of the Lord with you. Hallelujah. Because the word of the Lord, that will give us insight, understanding, that will bless us, that will help us in our life. Hallelujah. Amen. So this man, our theme for this man is godly counsel. Godly counsel. Hallelujah. Minister the side. Godly counsel. And today's message, the title of today's message is the safety in counsel. Hallelujah. The safety in counsel. And we're going to learn so much today. We're going to go into the word of the Lord today. Because I believe it will give you such insights, just such understanding that will bless you and help you in your life. The safety in counsel. Amen. So the verse, the verse is Proverbs chapter 11, verse 14. Proverbs chapter 11, verse 14. This is where the, the, the subject, the theme, everything is from this Bible verse. Everything that we say today, this is the main Bible verse that we're going to speak on. Proverbs. Well, we're going to be in Proverbs this month. Proverbs is the book of wisdom to give you understanding, to help you, not only in your spiritual life, but your physical life as well. Proverbs 11, verse 14. And it says, actually, let's, let's, let's all read it together. 3, 2, 1. Where there is no counsel, the people fall. But in a multitude of counselors, there is safety. Hallelujah. In the multitude of counselors, there is what? There's safety. There's two key words I want you to take from today's sermon. Counsel and safety. Hallelujah. Counsel and safety. Before I start, I want to ask you a question. You have two options. You can go back 10 years with the knowledge that you have now. You can go back 10 years. And maybe some of the some of you be 18, you be 20 or whatever. If you go back with the same knowledge and everything that you know now, or I will give you 100,000 pounds from today to start with, which one would you choose? If you can go back 10 years with all the knowledge, all the understanding, everything that you know now, the doctrine and prayers, the, all these things that you know, you go back 10 years. Or someone gives you a hundred thousand just to go for it in your life. What would you choose? What would you choose? Would you choose to go back with, 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 with the, your knowledge now? Or would you choose someone to give you money? Chris, what would you choose? Would you go back? You would go back. Why would you go back? Hallelujah. That's the answer I'm looking for. Hallelujah. Because of if I'm going back 10 years, the knowledge that I've acquired in my life now, if I go back with that same knowledge, I'll be able to multiply. I'll be even better off. I will know the doctrine numbers that on the 27th uh, of this date, this was not I'll write it down and go back. And then I'll make sure that I win that day. Hallelujah. So with the knowledge that I have now, I'll be able to make so many different choices. Some of you. If you were to go back 10 years, 20 years, you would make different choices, right? Yes. You would do things differently, right? Yes. You would change some things. That didn't help you in the past, eh? in your life now. Hallelujah. Yes. So there is safety in cancer. There is safety. And the reason why I'm saying this is that there's a, there's a big way of wisdom available to us. There's so much wisdom in this world. There's so much wisdom in the word of the Lord. There's so much wisdom. The prophet said, wisdom is shouting in the streets. That means wisdom is speaking every day. Wisdom is speaking. Wisdom is speaking. Wisdom is speaking. When you go to your workplace, wisdom is speaking. When you go to your marriage, wisdom is speaking. Wherever you are, wisdom is always speaking to us every day of our life. Hallelujah. But there's so many people that have ignored that ignore wisdom. And some people have gotten themselves in all kinds of trouble because they've ignored the wisdom that is constantly shouting at us. Hallelujah. 
So Solomon was writing Proverbs for his son. For his son to have wisdom. For his son to make better choices. For his son to learn something that will be, that will be better for him in his life in the future. If you know about Solomon, towards the end, his life went really sour. He made some choices that did not help him. So he's writing this book to advise his son, my son, wisdom is talking. Listen to me. Because I have the experience. I have made good decisions. I have made bad decisions. And I am teaching you, my son, listen to me. Hallelujah. Amen. Listen to me. Folks, there's safety in counsel. And that's what we want to learn today. So I want to tell you a few things. The necessity of counsel. The, the Hebrew word for counsel is tabulot, which means steering. So when somebody is counseling, it's like they're steering you to the right path. They're giving you direction. Hallelujah. So counseling means steering. That is the original language. Steering. Someone wants to steer you in the right path. Hallelujah. And then one of the biggest reasons why people fall. Remember, the Bible says that why there is no counsel, people fall. One of the biggest reasons why people fall in this life is because they don't listen to counsel. One of the biggest reasons people fall in life is because they don't listen to what? To counsel. When you try and advise them, hey, my daughter, hey, my son, hey, my friend, don't do this. Don't go this way. The problem is that sometimes we are so, like, within ourselves that we think we know it all. We think we know better than our elders. We think we know better than the people that have experienced the thing that we're about to go into. Hallelujah. Some of the people in this room, they're about to step into something that will hurt you. And the Bible says that wisdom is speaking, wisdom is shouting, and yet we are ignoring what wisdom is telling us. Hallelujah. And people are falling because their hearts are so hard. They think they know it all. A mother will try and advise her daughter, my daughter, don't do this. What do you know? A father will try and advise her son, my son, don't go this path. What do you know? Your time is different than mine. I don't care. I will do whatever I want. I will do whatever I feel like. This is what my heart is telling me, so I'm going to do it. And so, so they refuse any advice. They push it away. Some people, when you try to advise them, it's like you're insulting them. When you try to advise them, it's like you're insulting them. And how they reject it, not even to listen or digest it. Hallelujah. So people fall. You're falling in your life. You go through so many struggles in your life. Because the Bible says that there is no counsel around you. You're not surrounding yourself with counsel. You're not surrounding yourself with the thing that will help you to move forward. Because that's like you want to go back 10 years. Someone has lived the life that you're about to live into. So they're able to guide you. Hallelujah. Where there is no counsel, the people fall. And society has lied to us. This world has lied to us. And it made us think that we are this generation that we know better. That we know about because of the advancement of technology and all the things that we think, we were refusing so many people's lessons and advices because we think we know better. Hallelujah. Amen. Some people they just push advices away. You cannot even get close to them to speak to them. Listen, this is Proverbs chapter 12, verse 15. The way of a fool is right in his own eyes, but he who needs counsel. It's wise. When I read it, hey, God, you're calling me a fool. God does not care who you are. Because he wants the best for you. Hallelujah. And there's so many times when I make decisions not based on godly counsel, but based on what is good to me. And the Bible says that my way is like the way of a fool. God is actually calling me a fool because I'm not listening to anybody. I'm refusing any counsel. So my, my way is right in my own eyes. Hallelujah. Amen. Beloved, you know that your ways be right in your own eyes. Don't think you're smarter than everyone around you. Don't allow your education, your qualification, whatever you have, to think that you're better than somebody else. Hallelujah. Proverbs 15, 12. A scoffer does not love one who corrects him. Nor will he go to the right. A scoffer, a scoffer means someone who boasts, who likes to boast. Someone 
one who's very proud. They don't love one who corrects him. When you try and correct him, he will hate you. When you try and straighten his life, he will reject you. Then the Bible said that person is a scoffer. He does not love one who corrects him. And he will not go to the wise. Hallelujah. He will not go to the wise. Proverbs 14, 12. Proverbs 14, 12. There is a way, my favorite Bible verse. There is a way that seems right to a man, but its end is the way of death. Hallelujah. How many times have you made decisions in your life? In the other stuff, it seems so perfect to you. But then in the end, you're like, oh my goodness, what have I done? Even if I can just go back in time, I will change it. How many times have you made decisions in your life and they seem perfect, they seem right, but in the end, in the end, because none of you knows what tomorrow holds. No one knows what happened tomorrow holds. So Bible saying here that you, it, things can seem right to you, but then don't get caught up in the things that seem right to you. Surround yourself with counsel. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Because it's a way that is right to happen. But it will end in death. Proverbs 3, 7. Do not be wise in your own eyes. Fear the Lord and what? Depart from evil. Proverbs 1, 25. Because you disdain all my counsel and will have none of my review, I will laugh at your calamity and I will mock when your terror comes. That's the best speaking in Proverbs. So because you didn't listen to my counsel, because you didn't listen to my review, Definitely the end will not be good for you and I will laugh at your calamity. Hallelujah. Because that is the end. That's why the Bible says that where there is no counsel, people will fall. Hallelujah. So as I'm speaking to you, I want you to start evaluating your life. Start thinking about your life. What you have surrounded yourself with. Are you the kind of person that rejects counsel? When someone tries to advise you, not even listening to you, not even paying them respect, okay, yes, I'll pay. Some people, they hate it when people advise them, but it is for your own good. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Say, God, soften my heart in the name of Jesus. Soften my heart to counsel. Let there be a change for you today. Don't be wise in your own eyes. Don't follow your own path. Don't think that you know it all. Don't think that your way is perfect. Don't refuse when people are trying to advise you and correct you. Change everything on board. Because it will save you in the future. Hallelujah. I'm going to give you so many examples today that will show you. So number one, people fall because there is bad counsel. So there's no one around them that's counseling them. The other, the other side is that people fall because they are surrounding themselves with bad counsel. Hallelujah. One side is the one with no counsel. The other one is bad counsel. Ah, but Pastor, you told me that in a multitude of counsel, yes, in a multitude of counsel, not bad counsel, but good counsel. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So Proverbs 12, verse says in here, that the thoughts of the righteous are right, but the counsels of the wicked are deceitful. Hallelujah. When a bad person is counseling you, our, our mama was telling us when we had the, the Women's Day, about when she first came into the UK, trying to build a life with her husband. Trying to start and work so that she can bring her children over here. She had a vision, she had a goal. But someone that she became friends with is advising her, don't tell your husband this. Keep things from your husband. Hallelujah. Keep things secret from your husband. To change your bank account. He doesn't know what's going on in your bank account. They were advising her all of these things. Giving her all of these advices. Not knowing that that woman, she had a problem with her marriage. And look at the advice that she's giving to a young woman that has come into this country to build a life for herself. And she rejected that counsel because she knew that it would not help her. Don't surround yourself with bad counsel. Yes, no. Tell people to surround yourself with bad counselors. Mm. Oh, let's go, let's go, let's go do this. Let's go and let's go to work. Let's go and, and, and sleep with all the women that we can. Let's go and do uh, drinking. Let's go and do all kinds of things. And you are following, and you are following, you are following. It's like you have nothing within yourself to restrict you, but you're just following what people are telling you. And you don't even evaluate it, the level of the advice they are giving unto you. Hallelujah. And both of them are bad. Both of them are bad. Do not surround yourself with bad counsel. Analyze yourself and see where you are. 
Hallelujah. And the reason why that you're surrounded with yourself with people that do not have your best interest. If I was to advise you, let's go come in. It's not like I have your best interest at heart. I just want someone to come along with me to mess about. If I advise you, let's go do something bad. I don't really care about you. I just want company. Yeah. Hallelujah. So the people that advise me, ask yourself, do they have my best interest? Do they really care about me, my life? If something bad were to happen to me, would they care? Hallelujah. I remember I was reading an interview one rapper, and he said that um, he, he, he got to a point in his life, he had so many friends around him. So he pretended that he lost all his money. And he told all his friends, he had about 50 or uh, 100 people around him. He told them, oh, I've lost all my money, I'm going bankrupt. He said only three people followed up with him and really, really stayed with him. So then he said, oh wow, so when I had money, all these people were around me. But when they heard I was broke, only three of them stayed. So that was the way of him to test the people around him, whether they are good or bad. Hallelujah. Ask yourself the people around you, the people are advising you, the people are telling you, let's do this, let's do that. Do they have your best interest at heart? Surround yourself with godly counsel. Hallelujah. Let me give you an example. First case at the top, verse 1. When you go to verse 5, it's a long way, this is going to you. Rehoboam, this became after Solomon died. This man called Rehoboam became king of all Israel. And when he became king, there was a man called Jeroboam, and he came into Rehoboam and said, Oh, when, when your father Solomon was in charge, we had a lot of struggles, but I want to make peace now. So let, me, let there be peace. Let there be, let there be peace between us. And, and Rehoboam said, okay, fine, give me, give me one week, just let me go and think about it, and I'll come back to you. And the Bible says that Rehoboam called his counselors, the wise people, and he said to him, yes, it is true, your father was very difficult with them, but this is an opportunity for you to strengthen your, 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 your kingdom. So take them in, take Jeroboam in, and, and then give him the opportunity to make peace. Hallelujah. But the Bible said that, well, after they gave him the advice, he went and spoke to his friends. He said, my friends, this is what these old people are telling me. What do you think? He said, ah, king, what do you mean? This man wants to come back. No, 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 no. Get to tell him to get away. And the Bible said that he rejected the wise counsel and he took the counsel of his friends. And he rejected Jeroboam's proposal. And the Bible said that Jeroboam then went back to Egypt and strengthened himself and came to fight against Jeroboam and he lost half of his kingdom. Because of the bad advice, this man lost his kingdom. Hallelujah. Is it God that made us want to fall? Then the Spirit lifted me up and brought me to the east gate of the Lord's house, which faces eastward. And there at the door of the gate were twenty-five men, among whom I saw Jezaniah, the son of Azur, and Panathia, the son of Benaiah, prince of the people. And he said to me, Son of man, these are the men who devise iniquity and give wicked counsel in this city who say the time is not near to build houses. Hallelujah. God said to Ezekiel, look at these are the people. They are giving bad, bad counsel to, to my children in Israel. Say, this is not a time to buy a house. It's not a time to build a house. It's not a time to build a house for the Lord. Hallelujah. And some of you are surrounding yourself with the wrong people. When it, there's an opportunity for you to even establish yourself, they will tell you, oh, don't do it, just relax, just relax. Some of you, you have savings ready, and you want to go build a house, and you go to your friend, because they don't care about you, they say, oh, don't worry, don't worry, just spend it somewhere else. You are surrounding yourself with bad counsel. So they're always taking you away from your purpose. Bad counsel will delay your destiny. Bad counseling will delay your purpose. Bad counseling will delay the things that God has in store for you. Hallelujah. Bad counseling. There was a story in Numbers 21 verse 15. Moses said to them, Have you kept all the women alive? Look, these women caused the children of Israel through the counsel of Balaam to trespass against the Lord. Bible said that Balaam advised the, the, the enemies of Israel that these people are not their weakness. Use women against them and they were all for. And the Bible says that they, 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 Israel listened and they sinned against God because of one bad counsel. Hallelujah. Say, Lord, 
deliver me from evil counsel. Deliver me from evil counsel. Hallelujah. So what I want to share with you here is that a, a, a proper counsel, a good counsel, can save your life. A good counsel will save your life. It will preserve you. It will deliver you from disaster. It will deliver you from pain. It will deliver you from trouble that you don't want to experience. Hallelujah. So, so I want to right now just start changing your mind and your life. That what is the counsel around me? And if anybody gives you good counsel, listen to them. Take it on board. Evaluate it. Digest it. Break it down. And pick the best that will help you in your life. Don't be like a person who rejects counsel. And don't be like a person that surrounds himself with bad counsel. Hallelujah. It will save your life. It will save your life. So it was a concern in Proverbs 2 10. Go there. When wisdom enters your heart and knowledge is present to your soul, discretion will preserve you. Understanding will keep you. It will deliver you from the way of evil, from the man who speaks perverse things. When you let wisdom enter into your heart, when you let God come enter into your life, it will preserve you like never before. It will protect you. It will protect your life. It will protect your sanity. It will protect your mind. And it will give you peace. Let wisdom get into your mind. Seek wisdom. Seek understanding. Don't turn down by their good counsel. Don't turn down the people that have to your best interest trying to help you in your life. It will save you. Hallelujah. And then what Solomon was going to tell his son, my son, surround yourself with good counsel. Because it will save your life one day. Hallelujah. It will save your life one day. It will save you from trouble one day. It will preserve you and it will keep you. Don't look for that extra thing that is not there. The God has surrounded you with wisdom. Hallelujah. But you're just rejecting it. You haven't opened your eyes. You're not looking hard enough. Hallelujah. It will save you. Listen, Esther, Esther, even Esther, the people that we pray about, every time we pray, oh, the blessing of Esther, the blessing of this, the blessing of that, this is what they did. Esther 210. Esther had not revealed her people or her family for Mordecai had advised her not to reveal it. Esther was about to go into uh, 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 to the women of uh, when the king was choosing the women. But his uncle said, my daughter, when you go there, this is the advice I'm giving you. Don't reveal your true identity yet. And he list, she listened. And she was chosen to be queen. Hallelujah. 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 Imagine Esther said, no, 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 I don't need you anymore. You are not going to get to this point. I don't need you anymore. I'll do whatever I like. If they found out that time that she was from Israel, they would have rejected her. But she listened to good counsel. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. She listened to what? To good counsel. Exodus 18, 17. Even the, uh, the people that we look into. Uh, so Moses' father-in-law said to him, the thing that you are doing is not good. Both you and these people who are with you will surely wear yourself out. But this thing is too much for you. You are not able to perform it by yourself. Hmm. Moses, a man who saw God face to face, the man who brought the king and the commandments to God, his father-in-law was advising, hey, my son, this thing you're doing is not good. You're trying to do everything yourself. You're trying to take everything upon you. You're going to wear yourself out. You're going to burn out. So listen to my advice. Start delegating. This is how you should do. And about the Moses listened to his father-in-law's advice. Amen. Hallelujah. He listened. And he delegates and he gave people responsibilities. And that gave him the opportunity to fellowship with God even more. Hallelujah. There's counsel around you that will stop you from being burnt out. There's counsel around that will stop you from being, from, from being tired all the time. Hallelujah. So listen to good counsel. Listen to good counsel. Hallelujah. My favorite one, Ruth, and I, I Ruth 3 verse 1. Ruth 3 verse 1. Then Naomi, her mother-in-law, said to her, My daughter, shall I not seek security for you, that it may be well with you? Now Boaz, whose young woman you were with, he is, is he not our relative? In fact, he is withering body tonight at the threshing floor. Therefore, verse 3, wash yourself and anoint yourself. 
yourself. Put on your best garment and what? And go down to the threshing floor. But do not make yourself known to the man until he has finished eating and drinking. Then it shall be when he lies down that you shall notice the place where he lies. And you will go in and uncover your feet and lie down. And I will tell you where you should do that. Look, look, wait, listen to this. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. She's advising her. She's advising her. Say, hey, my daughter. My daughter. Naomi is advising her. Ruth, you are new in this country. This is how you should do it. Hallelujah. Some of you, you are praying that, oh, I want to meet my Boaz. I want to meet my Boaz. But your Naomi is advising you, but you are not listening. Hallelujah. You want to meet your Boaz. But look what Ruth did. She listened to the advice of Naomi. That hey, this is how you should do it. When you go there, do it like this. Do it like this. And when you go into there, take off your shoes. Do this. Do that. Do that. And what does he say in the verse five? And she said to her, "All that you have said to me, I will do." Hallelujah. And that's what led her to meet her Boaz, because she listened to wise counsel. Hallelujah. That is what God, the blessing that we talk about all the time, is that she listened to wise. So it's not just about you praying all the time, but it's about who you are, what counsel you are listening to. Yeah. Hallelujah. It's about the counsel that you are listening to. That is what will lead you to your blessings. That's what will lead you to your favor. So listen to wise counsel. Hallelujah. Say, God, lead me to wise counsel in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Lead me to wise counsel. Yes, that I can, that, that was that will save me. That will help me in my future. That will direct my steps. Hallelujah. That will what? That will direct my steps. Lead me to wise counsel. Now the quality of counsel. This is how you, you get wise counsel. Proverbs 1 5. A wise man will hear and increase learning. And a man of understanding will attain wise counsel. Hallelujah. You know one of the best ways you can get to wise counsel? One of the best ways you can get wise counsel is to learn from other people's mistakes. Hallelujah. There's two ways you can learn in this life. Through other people's experience or through your own. But with your own, it's far more dangerous. Hallelujah. It's so much better to learn from other people's mistakes. I read about this famous basketball player, Shaquille O'Neal. And he said to her, every time there was an incident in the news, maybe a young man was going to prison or something like that, his mom would call him, said, hey, my son, have you seen the news? Make sure you surround yourself with a good friend. He said, yes, mama, I'll listen. Every time, hallelujah, the same thing happened with me and my mom. Whenever there's something in the news about red or whatever, hey, Allen, 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 make sure, make sure, make sure you see the news. I don't want to be in the news, oh. I don't want to be in the news, oh. If you get me in trouble, I will leave you here. Hallelujah. She's using other people's mistakes to teach me that this is what can happen to you if you go down the same path. Hallelujah. Today, if you get me in this news, I will leave you here. I say, hey, Mama, you leave me. Say, yes. I will go back. Amen. Hallelujah. Yeah. But mama will not go back. Hallelujah. Yeah. She will stay with her son. Hallelujah. Yeah. She will stay with her son. Because yeah. we are learning from others' mistakes. Yes, That's one of the best ways you can learn in this life. Yes. And some of you, your parents, your friends, your brothers, your sisters, they have made mistakes in their life. Learn from it. Mm. What did this person do? What did he do that that brought him to that situation? Learn from it. Evaluate it. Speak to your mom, speak to your dad. Dad, what did you do in this instance? How well, did this mistake come about? Hallelujah. Mom, what did you do? What happened? You, you, you were struggling at this point. What was what, there? Listen, search for counsel, search for wisdom. Learn from people's mistake and add it onto your life because it will save you. Hallelujah. They made you see the news. That's why I like learning the news. Because I'll talk, okay, fine. Some people surround themselves with their friends and then their friends betray them. So, oh, okay, I need to make sure that I keep my friends away. 
Some people, uh, their women advise them to leave their husband and they leave their husband and they regret it. Ah, okay, I'll make sure that I won't let you want to advise me to leave my husband. She so, said, so, you know, learn from their mistakes. Mm. And that will give you wisdom. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. That's all what will give you wisdom. Proverbs 21 11. When the scoffer is punished, the simple is made by this. What he's saying is that when the foolish man is suffering, the person who is wise will be increasing because they are learning from it. Mm. Hallelujah. Mm. When the scoffer is punished, the simple is made wise. So the one that humbles themselves and live and, and evaluates what was going wrong in that person's life, they will be made wise because they are learning from it. They are learning from it. Hallelujah. So learn from people's mistakes. Don't just blow your way like it will never happen to you. It can happen to you. Don't think you are better than that. You are not better than that. It can happen to you. So learn from others' mistakes. Hallelujah. The next thing you can get wisdom is seek advice from trustworthy people. Seek advice. Hallelujah. Seek advice. Proverbs 13 10. By pride comes nothing but strife. But with the well advised is wisdom. Hallelujah. And I've, I've tested this myself. And, and one of the blessed things that happened to me is when I first started working at my, at my current company now, I, 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 they had a mentor system. And I was placed under this one woman. And the first advice system is Alan, now that you're new in this role, number one, make sure you build your brand. Number two, make sure you seek mentors. Look at the people that are the most successful in the sales organization and go and ask them, please, can you mentor me? And then when, when you do that, it's going to help you because they will give you all these different pointers. They will do this, they will do that, they will do this. And that lady's advice changed my, my whole mind. Because the more part I did was, I'll start doing the same thing. So if I see that someone's successful, oh, what did you do that made you successful? Oh, okay, okay, can you show me how to do that? And then we'll, then we'll show you. Oh, what, what made your marriage work? What made your marriage so strong? What made you marry for 50 years? Oh, it's because we do this. Oh, okay, fine. We'll write it down. What made you so successful in your life? What did you do that made you successful? What did you do? To, how did you build up a successful company? How did you do so? You're always seeking advice from the wise. Hallelujah. And one thing I love about our, our papa is that so when he was coming up, he always wanted to, to mingle with people that were above him. People that were better than him, but that was going to motivate him. Hallelujah. Who are you making with? Who are you surrounding yourself with? Seek advice from wise people. Hallelujah. And even it came to a point when I was doing my interview for my promotion, I went to my mentor, oh, I have to see the notes. He goes, okay, I don't do this how you should do it. Do this, do that. Do this. She gave me a step by step guide. Now imagine if I said, oh, I know it all. Hallelujah. So seek advice from trustworthy people. Someone that is successful in your life. Someone that has a good marriage that you admire. Someone that has a, a good a, a reputation. Seek advice from them. Ask them the questions. How did you do it? And take it on board. And it will make you wise. Hallelujah. When you, when you are praying for wisdom, it's not going to drop from heaven and earth to your brain. That's not how it works. That's not how God works. God will not drop wisdom like, a, like, like an Amazon Prime delivery and just drop it into your mind. No. Hallelujah. He will surround you yes, Lord. with people. Then he will push you to go and search wisdom. Go and search for it. Amen. He will surround you with things that with people that have made mistakes. And he will tell you, go and learn from it. And that's how you are gaining wisdom. Wisdom, 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 wisdom. Then before you know you're getting wise, you're getting wise, you're getting you're getting wiser every single day because you are learning from people's mistakes and you're surrounding yourself with godly counsel, wise counsel, and you are increasing, you are increasing. And people say, ah, How are you so wise? It's because I am sick. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. Seek advice from trustworthy people. Proverbs 19 20 says, Listen to counsel and receive instruction that you may be wise in your latter days. Yeah. Hallelujah. Listen to what? Counsel. Listen to counsel. If somebody is counseling you, listen to it. That you may be wise in your latter days. Hallelujah. It will save your life. It 
for Savior. Another way you can get counsel. So the first one is learn from people's mistakes. The second one is seek advice from wise people. And then the third one is let God's word counsel you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Yeah. If you want to be wise, learn the Bible. Yeah. I tell you, there's so much wisdom in the Bible. Mm. Hallelujah. Amen. There's so much wisdom in the word of the Lord. Yes. That is where I learned. When you learn, you see, the one thing about the Bible is that it doesn't hide. When you see David, you see what he did and the battles that he did. Hallelujah. What did I learn from David's mistake when he went and uh, committed adultery and he murdered? In that one time, he was just sitting on his rooftop. He was bored within himself and he looked at a naked woman. And he made that mistake. Hallelujah. And then after that, he tried to cover himself by killing another person, the woman's husband. So what, what wisdom can I take from that? Hallelujah. When Joseph, when she went into uh, to Potiphar's house and the woman was trying to entice her, what did you do? Just run away. Hallelujah. So when I compare the two, uh, the Bible says flee from youthful lust. So that means I don't need to stay in the, anything that will draw me to lust. I need to run from it. David stayed and he kept on looking and it tempted him and it, it, it sucked him in. Hallelujah. So I left from that in the Bible. Then you need to run away from a situation sometimes. There is wisdom in the word of the Lord. And David said, your word is a lamp unto my feet. It gives me wisdom. It makes me understand. Hallelujah. And God, lead me to your word. Yes, Lord. Hallelujah. Amen. Now the last part. So now that you are surrounding yourself with wise counsel. And now that you are you're going to start listening to wise people. You want to learn from others' mistakes, and you want to make sure when someone is speaking to you, you take it on board and you digest it and you think about it thoroughly, and you don't reject anyone that wants to advise you. Hallelujah! That's when the Bible says in Proverbs 11, 4, where is our original thing? Where there is no counsel, the people fall. But in a multitude of counselors, there is safety. Yeah. Hallelujah! There is safety. Yes, you know what safety means? Do you know what safety means? Safety means a uh, sua, which means victory and physical salvation. Not spiritual salvation, like salvation, but physical salvation. So that means that when you surround yourself with good counsel, you will be victorious. In the multitude of counsel, there is safety. Hallelujah. You will have wisdom. And when you surround yourself with a good counsel, you have wisdom to victory. When you surround yourself with good counsel, you will be safe. Hallelujah. You will be saved in your life and you will begin to walk in victory. Hallelujah. You will begin to walk in victory. Hallelujah. You begin to walk in uprightness. You begin to walk in a way that will bring blessing upon blessings. Hallelujah. And that is my prayer for you this afternoon. Is that God will surround you with good counsel. That God will help you to listen to advice. That you will be wise in your ways. Yeah. 
That's how we break and we set ourselves apart. When we surround ourselves with wise counsel and allow the power of the living God to work in me and to direct me. Hallelujah. When the situation comes into my life, I will take it to my father because he is the great counselor. Hallelujah. He is my counselor. He counsels me. So I will pray to my father that God, this has come upon my life. I need your counsel. I need your advice. I need your advice. That God, I am in my marriage. I don't know what to do. I need your wisdom. I pray that for you today. That God will give you wisdom in this new day of your life. In the name of Jesus, I will go to my father. Hallelujah. And then I will go to my wise people. I will search for wisdom. And God will guide me. God will guide my steps. And he will lead me to victory. To victory. To victory. In the name of Jesus. So my prayer for you, my brothers and sisters. I desire so much for you to have victory in your life. Hallelujah. I desire for you so much to be the best person of yourself. Hallelujah. I desire for you so much that God will just make you prosper. Hallelujah. I desire for you so much that you live a peaceful life. You live a blessed life. You live a life not filled with trouble, not filled with pain, not filled with burden. But God elevates you. I desire for that in your life. I desire that for you so much. Hallelujah. I desire for, for you so much. For God to just give you victory upon victory upon victory in your life. Hallelujah. But the Bible says for you to do that, you need to surround yourself with good counsel and you will be safe. Hallelujah. You need to surround yourself with good counsel and you will be safe. Hallelujah. May the word of the Lord keep you safe today. In the mighty name of Jesus.